Hello everyone, uh, this is your friendly neighborhood software engineer Gaurav and <clears throat> welcome to yet another episode uh, of the software engineering series uh, and today I will be giving you an opinionated guide on how to prepare for uh, Google interviews. Not only Google interviews for any other tech giant out there, be it Amazon, Microsoft, uh, Facebook, Google. So, so without wasting any time, uh, I'll, I'll let you know the structure of the preparation. So I've tried to structure the entire guide into uh, a six months time frame. So this guide primarily is for freshers or maybe uh, software engineers having four to five years of experience. Okay, so the first and the foremost thing that you need to do is the resume. So resume is really very important because this is the first thing that somebody from the company will take a look at and uh, it basically reflects you, what kind of work you have done. So I'll let you know what I followed for my resume. Uh, so the first thing is, it should be very concise. And concise means, it, it's better uh, if it's kind of a one-pager. And if it's a one-pager, which in turn means that you, that you have to move away from writing sentences in the uh, resume as such, and prefer bullet points. So write, write your resume in the form of bullet points. Uh, maybe do a two column resume because you need to cover uh, the entire content in a single page or at max 1.5 pages. The next thing is the skills. So make sure that you mention your skills in maybe bold so that the skills are very vividly apparent. Don't forget to mention your CGPA as well and maybe in bold because in a lot of companies, well CGPA actually doesn't matter but somebody having a CGPA of nine versus somebody having a CGPA of five. So a general tendency is to kind of give preference to the nine pointer, right? So if you have a pointer which is above, I would say eight, it's, it's definitely good to mention that. And the other thing is anything, anything unique about yourself. So uh, in my case, I, uh, when I was applying, I uh, around, around six months before applying, I was reading a particular book and I thought I should mention it in the uh, resume. And what happened in my Amazon interview is the hiring manager uh, skipped one round as in, uh, the hiring manager was supposed to come in the fourth round, but he uh, came in, in the third round and uh, asked me about that book. He told me that, okay, he, even he has read that book and he found that book to be very interesting and we discussed a few bits on that book. So, you got the gist. Well, and the last point is impact. So, impact matters a lot in the resume. Let's say, let's say you are a, a web developer or a backend engineer and you improved the system. So writing this in your uh, resume that I improved the system is not enough. You should actually mention the numbers that I worked on this particular bit and I was able to reduce the load time from maybe five seconds to one second and similar numbers and put them in bold out there. So that whoever is reading the resume, it is very clear that this person has made a lot of improvements in, what, in whatever kind of projects he was working before. Now that we have prepared the resume, let's start with the uh, actual preparation. So the first month of the preparation. So I assume that you have some kind of prior knowledge of uh, data structures and algorithms. Maybe you have gone through that in your course. Even then, it's better to again go through some kind of theory. So in the first month, try to focus on data structures and algorithms theory, and also get a, get a book that focuses on the coding interviews. So I referred to this book called Cracking the Coding Interview, link in the description below, the green book. Actually, that book uh, has some theory as well which might be enough, but I'm not so sure. Uh, but for data structures, I mean, theory is not so much. You just have to understand what the data structure is, where does it help, and rest is just practice. Try to give around three to four hours a day. Uh, I assume if you are a working professional and you get home by 7 p.m., you still have around two, two to three hours. So yeah, try to give time, try to spend time over uh, this book. And I think that that should be enough for the first month. The second month brings competition with it. So here you should start uh, with some kind of uh, online competitions, online coding competitions. So I did Code Forces, and even even you can do Code Forces. Maybe so. Code Forces have these three kinds of divisions: three, two, and one. Three being the easiest. So maybe start with three. And when you are confident enough that you are able to solve a lot of questions in Division Three, then you can move to Division Two, and maybe one as well. Apart from doing code forces, keep on doing CTCI as in cracking the coding interview. So one thing which is very important while doing code forces or any, or any other com competitive uh, coding, whenever you are done with the competition, you should do a retrospect 
on that particular competition as in how many questions you were able to solve and also solve those questions which you were not able to solve if you're not able to uh, solve those questions just just refer to the solutions provided by others looking at other solutions is very important it, it, it actually gives you a different perspective on uh, how to look at the problem or how to approach the problem in the first place. That is all about month two. And in the month three, just keep on doing uh, code forces and keep on doing CDCI. In code forces, I, I think you can, by third month, I think you can move to division two or division one. Just keep on doing that. By month four, again, keep on doing code forces. So I assume that by month four, you you, you have already covered the entire coding section of the CDCI. So then you can move on to the design part of the CDCI if you if you're an experienced software engineer. And while you are covering the design section of the CDCI, it's 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 also better to maybe refer a few videos on YouTube. So there is this guy called Gaurav Sen, and he has a lot of great videos on YouTube regarding how to design WhatsApp and other uh, online systems. I definitely recommend that. So month five, okay, month five is where your actual uh, application begins. So month five, you, you should uh, start applying to companies out there. And I'll create a separate video on how to apply for these kind of companies. But the silver bullet is, if you have a friend in some company, that is the best option. The other uh, best option is to reach out to recruiters through LinkedIn. And the last option is to go to the company's website and apply via uh, their career section. And I would suggest maybe start with uh, some startups or some non top tier tech companies so that you can get a hang of the interview process and then maybe jump on to the big guys. Apart from applying, I assume that by now uh, you have totally moved on division one or division two in core forces. And you have uh, covered the entire design section of CDCI. Now, in addition to uh, doing code forces, you can start exploring some other website as well. So in my case, I, uh, I did interview bit. And so interview bit, it, it is actually good. You uh, get to see a lot of questions in some hierarchical form. Uh, it is good and you can try that. So month six. Month six is where so I assume that while you were doing code forces, you were doing the retrospect and you were writing all those things in your notes as well. So it's time to refer your notes and and you can still continue with code forces and interview bit. If you're done with interview bit, you can start code chef as well. It's entirely up to you. And all the months to follow after month six will look like month six only, as in you just refer your notes. Also, you keep on applying as well and uh, just, just keep going on with the code forces competitions. Yeah, this is what I followed. So I guess if it works for me, it'll work for you as well. Huh. So I have three side notes on this entire process. One is, apart from doing what I mentioned, uh, don't forget Geeks for Geeks because there will be a lot of topics that you come across. You won't actually find good explanations either in the books or uh, out there somewhere else. Geeks for Geeks is a very nice website. So one thing you can do in Geeks for Geeks is if you feel that you are lacking in a particular topic, just pick that particular topic and sweep out all the questions on Geeks for Geeks, like I did. So I felt that I don't understand dynamic programming uh, very clearly. I just went to Geeks for Geeks and uh, I guess there was some 30 or 40 questions for dynamic programming and I just covered all of those and I became a master since then. Okay, the second note is regarding companies. If you are preparing for Microsoft, Microsoft focuses a bit on uh, operating systems and synchronization constructs. Make sure that you read about Mutexes, semaphores, and uh, leader writer's problem, producer consumer problem, all that other stuff. And if you are preparing for Amazon, uh, make sure that you practice code by writing with your hands. Uh, so Amazon, for some reason, they demand production level code in the interview. By production level, I mean there shouldn't be any syntactical mistake or you shouldn't miss any kind of edge cases whatsoever. And your code shouldn't throw null pointer exception. And the third side note is communication. It's a bit tricky because we engineers, we don't actually focus on interpersonal skills and communication, which actually matters a lot uh, in interviews and even beyond interviews. So once you get 
inside uh, these kind of companies and mark my words that these companies are not hiring for India. These companies are actually hiring for the entire company, which means that, that they can move you to some other country in the future. So the very least that is expected out from you is you should speak in English relatively fluently. Even I'm not very good at English, but yeah. Okay guys, that is it. I hope you liked the video and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see these kind of videos in the future as well. I'm not very sure uh, what kind of video should I make in the future. So let me know in the comment section what you want to hear from me. And uh, yeah, that is it. I will see you in the next one. Bye.